I feel like this is such a tradition now. Oh, I was like, oh, do you want to get some food? And he was like, you know what? I actually want to get some yogurt because I saw you have this with Navid. So here we are. Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's video. Today I am filming with Aaron. We actually met for the first time today. Do you want to talk about who you are first? Yeah, so I'm a student about to go to my third year of the M Farm degree. I've also had a lot of experience outside the pharmacy and doing extracurricular activities. And I'm going to talk about that with you guys today. So we should talk about how we got on to make this video so you emailed me so he was interning at the RPS and and then you just said oh can you give some details about how you felt during like the pandemic yeah. so I said yes and then that got published didn't it yeah it did yeah, the RPS website exactly yeah. and then after that um, you sent me a blog and now that blog is what made me want to actually film this video so I read this blog and I realized that you had taken a different route into pharmacy and also you've gone through a lot yeah. and it made me realize some people out there they message me and say I don't think I'm going to get into pharmacy and I don't feel confident and then I thought actually here's someone who has gone through a long route to get to pharmacy but you're here now and you're actually yeah. doing really well yeah. so I wrote a list of questions because okay, so my first question is in your blog you talk about how you failed your A levels right yeah and then you didn't get into university not initially no at, at the start so how did you find the motivation to study again because you did your A levels again and well can I have some background story about, about yeah that? so I kind of I went into the real world and I kind of realize how tough it is out there you realize it's quite hard to find a job did you start working yeah i started to work so i went to work as a waiter and then went on to a counter assistant i realized you know people aren't sympathetic towards your circumstances so i also realized you know this is not where i wanted to be and you know it's, i wanted to make a change for my life so your father passed away yeah you know when you're in that situation you're just it's just you're just in shock and you just don't know how to get out of it although you don't think about it it definitely does have an impact on you yeah so yeah i realized that i was the only one that can do anything about it i mean no matter how difficult it gets no matter how much help you have around you it's that like you, you can make a change yeah. in your own life i just thought you know the best way to spend the money i'm earning is just save up and just sit my a levels again and you know it was the best thing i did did okay so you're a waiter then you did your a levels again yeah. and then what made you go into pharmacy so my dad was a pharmacist during my childhood my lot of my school holidays were for sitting upstairs in a, in a community pharmacy i didn't really know what was going on downstairs but when i did research after he passed away what role of pharmacist is i realized there's so much different areas you can go into and that's what made me really want to go into it because i thought so i like to do different things and i thought okay let's just look into this way look into that looked at the course contact the university and, and then i was just like yeah this is what's right for me okay so obviously you didn't take the traditional route into pharmacy which yeah. is why i'm making this video and you actually told me you did a two-year foundation course right yeah so i did a two-year foundation degree my university is actually the only one in the country to do that that's why what? i was attracted to that university it's, it's accredited by gbhc and also it allows you to transfer directly into the second year of the m farm degree wait 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 so you do two years foundation yeah and then you go straight into second year yes so you skip the first year essentially uh, uh, no no you it's a, you do the first year split in two years. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. I see, so, I see, yeah. I see, okay. So you do two first year modules the first year and then two first year modules the second year. Yeah. And uh, you accompany that with two foundation modules each year as well. So would you recommend that foundation course to other people? I would definitely recommend that. I mean, it does prepare you for the pharmacy degree. And do you get a separate qualification for that or is it just part of the M farm? No, you get a separate qualification for okay. it. So yeah, you can also, so some universities will take you on, but you can stay at my university as well. It's definitely worth doing and you also get funded by student finance to carry on doing that degree as well so you don't have to it's not postgrad it's still undergrad so that was one of the questions a lot of people asked no you'll be fine if you go over that route okay so during university i actually didn't do much but you were the foundation pharmacy uh, foundation rep yeah foundation rep representative of some sort of Pharmacy committee. Pharmacy Society. Yeah. So how did you get that role? What 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 made you want to do it? When I first got to university, uh, obviously I was in a foundation degree, so I wasn't properly an M farm degree. So I was just like, I don't care. I'm I'm going to be in that pharmacy degree eventually. So I wasn't letting that put me down. I think a lot of students they feel that they can't get involved because of that. Um, because of the foundation degree or foundation one year course. I was the only foundation student going to any of their events, so the, the annual dinner, I mean, the bowling or anything like that. So I think that drew a bit of attention from other students. There was a student going for a presidency next year and one someone I made friends with, I recommended to them to, to put me in a committee. They created this role called the foundation rep. 
so oh, wow they saw you and then they created yeah, this role essentially yeah, because Look at you. Yeah, yeah they, they wanted to get more uh, foundation engagement but, so from their perspective they want to get involved but i think from the foundation perspective they don't realize they don't feel that they're welcome and yeah. which is a shame because i feel like you're wasting time if you don't get out there yeah just go there yeah, yeah yeah it's wasting time so and it's the only only the initial barrier isn't yeah, it yeah once you get past that barrier then yeah. you're just friends yeah yeah so because all at the end of the day you're all going to be graduating the same degree at the end of it yeah so that year we had the most engagement from our foundation students uh, ever and you know our numbers just flew probably we became the biggest wow. society in the university so we broke that record like how do you keep the balance between studying and also doing all of this event stuff for faculty so, students it's quite difficult i mean it's doable but it's quite hard but the, the only thing is it's quite rewarding as well it's just because the energy you're putting into it so people are going to be gaining from that also i feel that that I think you mentioned before when the Kings is actually there they are the groups as well yeah, yeah. so we have, we have the same we have, we have right, the same right, we have right. people have their own little groups and I feel that shouldn't be the way because at the end of the day you can't choose who you're going to be working with as a pharmacist you're going to be mixing together eventually yeah. so you know I feel if I ran good events more people will come and you know they'll mix and it's also it helps you develop your interpersonal skills as well I think you need that these days you can't just be academic clever you need to yes yeah 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 because yeah. yeah. at work you know yeah, yeah. it's not just you doing your work at a computer you're talking to people yeah. talking to your colleagues yeah. getting on with your colleagues is really important as well yeah exactly so, so yeah it's those skills you need to obviously develop as well while yeah. you're at uni and it also helps you stand out from the crowd as well yeah and the more you do it the better yeah you get at it yeah all right so actually we were talking about how you were an intern at the rps yeah which is how you reached out to me. Yeah. So how did you get this internship? Because a lot of people will be interested. I was actually, it's a funny story. I was reading an article about uh, ibuprofen and the uses of it during COVID-19. Yeah. Then I saw in the newsletter actually that they were advertising this job. Like obviously before you get an interview, you have to answer a essay question that they give you. How long was it and did you actually enjoy it? So yeah, it was eight weeks. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Obviously we had to work remotely. We'll usually be in the London office, oh, the right. headquarters. Yeah, it was quite good because you got to see what goes on behind the scenes as well? I think I don't think I'll ever look at the BNF the same <laughs> again. <laughs> I, don't, I think the work that in goes in a good way or a bad way. Good way. I think you appreciate it more. You'd appreciate it more because you don't realise how much hard work actually goes into it. So many different processes that like revalidation. There's typesetting, and then obviously there's also other work they do. They're like researching this new information. So did you network at the RPS? Yeah, so you get to meet a lot of different people who work in different areas in the RPS. You get to ask them the questions that you want to always want to ask them as well. So it's quite it's quite good because they're quite experienced. And they can answer a lot of your questions. If you go to any other pharmacist to ask, they'll always know. Yeah. And um, because it's, <laughs> it's... On behalf of them, I'm sorry. <laughs> we got to meet the CEO as well. It was quite interesting. It was, it was a really good experience. So do you think having a... Because I didn't do Oriole, so I'm not sure. But do you think having all of this extracurricular experience, are you just doing it for yourself? Or is it to help you get jobs in the future or a bit of both? So yeah, it's a bit of both. I don't think you necessarily need to do it. The more experience you have in anything, it will help you. But I mean, you, like pharmacists like yourself, they've, they've gone on to do well without actually having to do... <laughs> You think I didn't do anything? It's true. No, not without that. <laughs> if you're not quite sure in what area you want to go into yet, that's yeah, definitely, it's definitely yes, a good idea. So right now, today, you, I came, I did my locum shift. You also came from work. Yeah, I came from work. And you work at Boots. Yeah, and and I work in, yeah, I work in outpatients. So uh, how, how, how did you get that job? Do you like it? What's going on? Yeah, I, I enjoy it. I'm obviously, a stu- being a student in London, you do also need that extra income. Not uh, even as a student. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, as a pharmacist, you still need that income. It's great because you get to obviously earn a bit of money and you also get to uh, refresh your dispensing skills and your OTC knowledge all the time. Does it help you in your OSCEs? It does. It helps you in yeah, it does help you. It definitely helps yeah. you in OSCEs. They're the over the crowd to questions and you kind of really really know what some of these drugs do. I mean, so when you ask, you just feel like you're at work. Um, how, did you, how did you get it? So I got it through a friend. So a friend was already working there and she recommended you know, me for the job. Kind of highlights the importance of networking because yeah. you know it can lead you to different places basically. So I think it's quite high, highly important. Do you, are you just doing that at the moment during some holiday or do you actually work during school time as well, like uni? I work during uni time as well. So I yeah, work weekends alongside my studies. Yeah, so I obviously have to work over the summer just to carry on that job into next year yeah but um yeah i think hopefully it'll be worth it yeah okay so you told me that you were given the title yeah. bpsa alliance healthcare pharmacy business and enterprise student 
of, of the year. Yeah. What the hell is that? <laughs> and what? how did you get it? So um, I have a friend who was a rep for BBSA. He was trying to recruit people to join the competitions. He asked me to get involved, did it as a favour really, and then I ended up going for the next round to the next round and I got to the final and I thought, okay, let's just see how far I can go with this. And I just kind of thought about what can make me stand out. And I just, I'm quite creative as well. Um, so I just used my creative skills and I just applied that into the competition. Yeah, so what was it about? Like, what did you actually have to do? So I had to, um, I would act as a pharmacy operations manager and running a chain of pharmacies and I had to talk about how to implement the falsified medicine directive into my chain of pharmacies. Yeah, so I had to do that as a pitch in front of um, some judges, some free, free judges. And, and the final round, we, I was sitting at the RPS dinner at the uh, BPS annual conference. The next thing you know, my name was called up on stage and yeah, I received a trophy and that title. From that, I got invited to the Alliance Healthcare headquarters oh. and I also got invited to uh, Business Enterprise Awards. It was in the Park Plaza Hotel in, um, I think, Westminster. So that that was that was really good and it was kindly paid for as well by the <laughs> allies after no so you're like oh i'm filming a video with Coragina <laughs> no, no, really. but actually i'm the <laughs> one who sat next to this at bpsa Alliance <laughs> healthcare business and enterprise student no. of the uh... <laughs> <laughs> i encourage everyone people to go for it because you don't know where it's going to lead you honestly i didn't think i could win i just went into it and i feel like the hardest part is probably overcoming that barrier and just being more confident in yourself um, yes yeah. And we were just saying, like, the reason I wanted to interview you is because after reading that blog and seeing just the experience that you have and all these things that you've just gone out to get, yeah. I think I feel like you've just never stopped. I just take opportunities as I come. <laughs> <laughs> I, just do, I just go for it. Uh, like I said about the foundation, people just don't want to get involved. And, you know, they're sometimes like, oh, I'm from this uni or I'm from this level. I kind of wanted to prove to people, like, you know, it doesn't, doesn't matter, matter. What, it doesn't matter what uni you go to, what level you're at, you um, you shouldn't be a barrier to your success. And, you know, I hope from my story, you can see that as well. Yeah, yeah. so go out yeah. there and apply for stuff. So I think you really need to get past this whole, oh, I, I, I don't know if it's for me, I'm not sure I can do it. Yeah, definitely. And just yeah. go, 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 go. Okay, so now what is, so you're in second year, you've just done your second year. Yeah. So now you're going to third, damn, you're, you're not even in third year and you've got all of this experience under your belt already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what are your future plans from now? Like, what do you plan on doing? So I obviously I'm going to third year. I've recently signed up to join the MEP advisory panel for the RPS. So yeah, I'll be getting involved in that. I hope I'll be one day in a position to help others that, you know, in my situation, I can, you know, yeah. I can give them advice from my experiences and hope you hopefully get them on the ladder as well. <laughs> Would you think about community or like RPS? Like, or like, would you think about hospital industry? Like what's... I'm, I'm kind of drawn to hospital, I'm quite drawn to hospital. Yeah. Uh, I would like to go and work in there just because you can try so many different areas out in the hospital mm -hmm. and I, I like to exercise my clinical knowledge as well. That's why I'm looking forward to third year because it's so much more clinical. Yeah, it is. There's uh, a big jump yeah, in it. Yeah, becomes... hospitals, I think, was where I want to go. Okay. So finally, the main aim of this video was to encourage people who feel like they're not essentially good enough to get into pharmacy to try and find a route into yeah. pharmacy. And so what would you say to students who feel like pharmacy is out of reach or they can't do it. I would say keep going. I think now more than ever with um, A-levels and what's going on around that, I think it's important to stay strong. I mean, just because things haven't worked out the way you wanted them to, doesn't mean there's not something better waiting for you after. I think people tend to forget when they work, some, when they get higher up, they tend to forget what it's like to be in your position. <laughs> that is so true. Yeah. So you, you'll come across people that make you feel there's no hope. And you know what, I wouldn't be sitting here today if I if I listened to them. And I hope you guys will do the same. And you know, just keep going. And yeah. you know, hopefully we will be colleagues one day. One of our similar values, yeah, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Is to get people off the ground. Yeah. When people message me and say, I got a job because of you, yeah. that makes my whole day. Yeah. And I'm sure that when yeah. people watch this, yeah. they'll be like, oh, you went through such a hard time and you didn't you didn't let any of the barriers stop you it's like no matter what people think of you or what what because what course you're doing or what job you're doing i feel like you know only you know you so i feel like you need to turn every negative into a positive it's true you'll, you'll get there take it from me you know it's not it's not the end do you know what <laughs> if that's well. i feel like this was some sort of like pharmacy therapy session <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice little hug in the form yeah, of the yeah, video yeah. it's really good i hope it can help a lot of people so i feel like we'll be filming again um, yeah. next time i want to ask you a little bit more about the internship in detail yeah. but if you guys have any questions for aaron then yeah. please write them in the comments below yeah Reach out to him. If you want to know anything about the foundation course, is that cool? Yeah, 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 it's fun. Yeah, I'd have to ask you and I'll let Regina know and yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay, then, we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.